What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week, you don't wanna miss them. In this video today, I'm going to be talking about everything that you need to know for away rotations. For those who are unaware, away rotations are rotations in your medical school, usually your fourth year, where you rotate or you spend time or a few weeks, usually a month, at different locations like all over the US. Depending on your, your specialty, whether you're going into a more competitive specialty like plastic surgery or dermatology, orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, ENT, some of those specialties, they really require you to do away rotations. So in your fourth year of medical school, you have a few months where you have this flexibility to do rotations pertaining to your specialty. In my med school at Georgetown, we were given maybe four to five months span where I could schedule different rotations at other locations th throughout the US. And most people pick a location based off of where they eventually want to end up or if they have a mentor at that location or if they heard great things about a program or if they're just curious and trying to learn more about a program. Say for instance, I was going into ENT and I had a mentor that was at UPenn or was at Stanford or was at the Cleveland Clinic and I just wanted to go there to spend time with my mentor, learn more about their program and then possibly increase my chances of getting into that particular program. Most people match at a place that they rotate at. So if you are going into orthopedics most people are doing three to four away rotations. So you spend the first part of your year doing your away rotations. So by the time it becomes time to apply for that particular program or residency, you had did all of your away rotations already. Uh, you may have met some people, that way they know you when your application comes across their desk. In my particular year, I, I spent a month doing orthopedic surgery in my fourth year at Georgetown. And then I did three away rotations. So I spent a month at Baylor out in Houston, a month in Chicago and uh, Northwestern in Chicago, and a month in San Antonio, Texas, where I eventually matched that. And that was my number one choice. So just like you're applying to med school, like you're applying to residency, like you're applying to fellowship, there's an application system where you have to apply for these away rotations. So during this application system, some places require you to have letters of recommendation. Others just want your step one score or they may want your, your clinical grades. They ask about your college, your research and people programs pick you based off of this. But I don't think it's very hard to get a away rotations. The more competitive ones may fill up really quickly. So I think it's important to get your application in quickly or as soon as possible. But uh, for the most part, they're not really strict about away rotations. Some places have step one cutoffs. No one can rotate at this program if you have less than a 240. Others are not that strict at all. So it just depends on the program and also the specialty in terms of their requirements. In terms of payment, in terms of who pays for these away rotations, well, you'll be paying for them. <laughs> um, gets really expensive. So you spend all of this this time away from your home institution. Like I traveled to Houston, you know, I flew there, you gotta get a rental car, I have to stay with someone. I traveled to Chicago, I had to fly there, I had to pay for a place for a month. Uh, but most of the time you pick places that you're familiar with. So if you're from Louisiana or you're from Minnesota, you may want to rotate at the Mayo Clinic or at LSU in Louisiana, and then you can stay with family members or friends and family or other classmates that, um, that live in that particular area. So that will save you some money, but for the most part, you have to pay for all your expenses. You're not going to get any more student loans or any extra money to pay for this. You just have to plan for it and save for it. So I suggest picking places that you're familiar with and you have friends and family at those locations that where you can save some money. And in terms of other things that you can do to save money, there is a website out there called rotatingrooms.com and I'll put a link in the description. And this is a website exclusively for the medical 
professionals where you can look for rooms in different locations that are rented out by residents, by medical students, and they're just for like 30 days or for two weeks or however long that you need, you need to uh, stay at a particular location. And I felt it was easier to do this and I felt more comfortable doing this and renting from a medical student or a resident versus going on Airbnb or trying to get a hotel for a month. But all of your food you have to pay for, all of your travel, all of your expenses, it's on you. Also, you have to remember that a couple months later, you're going to be going on interviews. So you have to plan for your fourth year kind of wisely and save up for it. So even though you're going to be spending four months, I spent four months out of that entire year, my fourth year, at different locations outside of Georgetown, outside of D.C., um, you still have to, in a couple months later, pay for interviews, for flights, for traveling expenses to these interviews and if you get 15 interviews that's a lot of money so make sure you plan for that and save for that but during your away rotations I think it's important to show up early be yourself ask a lot of questions and just don't be annoying there's a lot of med students out there that ask questions like how can I stand out during these away rotations well just do the things that I just uh, mentioned and just be yourself. Most residency programs want to have someone in their program that is cool, that's good, fun to be around because you're going to be around these particular people, these people for the next four or five years of your life. You don't want a really annoying or someone you just can't get along with. So that's how a lot of programs kind of pick their new residents. One aspect of that is their personality and how well they get along with other people. Other things are your scores, research, how well you did on the rotation. So a, ro a way rotation can either make or break your application. You spend a month there, which is a long time to be in a particular place, and the residents and the staff, they get to know you really well. So if you slip up one day and you're late or you sleep in or you say something stupid or crazy during your rotations, that can crush your whole chances of getting into that program. So just be on your P's and Q's for that entire month um, ask a lot of questions, you know, be yourself and just have fun. I mean, it's, it's a month. You get to spend in another city. You're not in your particular city from your home institution. So, uh, go out and have fun with the residents and enjoy that rotation. Now, do all specialties do away rotations? No. Pedi pediatrics is not very common. Internal medicine, not very common. Radiology plus or minus, but if you really want to go to a particular residency program, you should maybe go spend a month there or at least two weeks to do a rotation there and check it out and see if you like it. But that's kind of my suggestions for the away rotations. Uh, this is during your fourth year in medical school, especially the competitive specialties. It's pretty much set in stone at 99% of people, or I don't, I don't know I mean, exactly how I many people, 90% of people, if you go into orthopedics, plastic surgery, neurosurgery you're doing away rotation to get to know people they get to know you as well so hopefully this video helps thank you guys for watching make sure you subscribe new videos coming every week we'll see you next time